Hi, I'm Andrew Watson from Creative Guitar Studio, and it is Wednesday, January 13th, 2010. I'm going through some emails that have come into the studio here. I'm going to share some of them with you. Uh, first of all, uh, the one I'm going to start with is about uh, teaching guitar. It's from Ignacio, I believe is uh, is your name, and you're from Argentina. Thanks very much for writing in. It says here, hello, Andrew. I've recently started teaching guitar. Do you have any advice for new teachers on how to give a learn good learning curve to students and any important tips you can pass along to me? Um, okay, well, first of all, the advice I can give you about uh, getting your students to learn uh, the best that you, they can would definitely be based around you having a curriculum that you can write on your own, whether it's just in Word or something, you know, but do fretboard diagrams and all that kind of stuff, you know, like write stuff out for your students, essentially, because if you write it out, you're going to know it and you'll, you'll know how to teach it well, you know, as time goes on. Too. The more you teach something that you've developed, the better you're going to get at teaching it. So it's going to be just the greatest benefit to your students because you get better at teaching uh, material that you're the most familiar at. So, uh, so definitely creating curriculum on your own is ideal. Uh, second of all, um, important tips. Uh, I think overall what you really need to do is advertise. You need to get your name out there. Um, you know, I, in the city here, like uh, I have a, a bus bench, you know, I have a couple of bus benches. Uh, they do really well. They're fairly cheap advertising. You know, 100 bucks or so a month is uh, well worth it. Uh, Yellow Pages advertising has kind of gone down the way of the... A dinosaur. Um, I really find the internet is the best, you know. So definitely have a website, even if it's a basic website. But advertise, have business cards, give your name out a lot, and let all the music stores know that you're teaching. Get your name out there, and uh, you should have some fair success with it. Eventually, write me back. Let me know how you're doing. Uh, the next one here is from Mike from California. He's writing in and he's asking about uh, jazz standards, how to play over top chord changes. And how do I visualize the notes of um, the chords when I'm playing changes? Um, do I see the notes themselves as uh, you know F, A, C, or E if I'm doing a major or minor chord, or if I'm doing um, intervals? Uh, okay, so when I'm improvising over top of jazz standards and I'm changing through, I'm playing through changes. Uh, I go through um, intervals primarily. I'm seeing the fretboard as geometrical patterns based upon the fact that you know, the shape I'm making is maybe a minor third, major third, perfect fifth, or an outline of a certain structure through an arpeggio. So I do play by intervals somewhere in the back of my head once in a while, you know, and probably at the forefront of my mind, depending on how I'm going along the neck, I do sometimes think about the fact whether the note is an F or, or you know, A flat, E flat, whatever it might be. Um, but in the primary principal way, I'm actually thinking about it as uh, interval designs, so definitely the third, fifth, seventh, that kind of thing. Okay, let's go to the next one here. This is from Steve uh, from Vancouver, Canada. And Steve is uh, talking about how he's into some of the heavier stuff, metal, classical, bluesy stuff even. I know my neck uh, and I want to learn more about music theory. Uh, I want to get a degree, but can I get a degree from a music school like a conservatory of music at Burnaby, BC? Or should I go to a regular college or school for a music degree? Um, we want to be able to read things like Megadeth and play, you know, it sounds like you're into sort of the heavier stuff and all that. Um, geez, you know what, man, if you can afford it, I would really say it sounds like uh, Musicians Institute, going to GIT would probably be your, your best bet overall. It's really expensive to go there nowadays, but um, I just don't know of any kind of community-based uh, uh, community college or anything like that, uh, university that, you know, is a local mu university that's going to teach metal and like neoclassical stuff and all that jazz, man. Like, I don't think... Uh, uh, like I, when I think about our local university, it does not, you know, you're not going to find a shredder guitar teacher there. There's no, nobody, there is a jazz program and there's a classical program and that's pretty much about it. Uh, so, um, yeah, for like, you know, that kind of stuff, you just really can't beat Musicians Institute. They've really got it wrapped up. That's, that's the music school for that kind of stuff, man. So good luck with that. Uh, let's go to the next one. It is from Jeff and uh, he's saying here, I recently viewed a video about ta talking about major scale and how you can play the major scale chords, uh, different chords in the scale up across the neck. Can you please explain this idea? You know what, I did a couple of videos on this and essentially what it's all about is um, you're harmonizing chords. So just look for my videos on my YouTube channel, my Creative Guitar Studio YouTube channel that talk about harmonizing uh, chords up the neck. They'll explain all this stuff. Uh, that's basically what it is. It's you know just going along your neck with a scale and uh, harmonizing it as you go. Uh, if I just grab the guitar quickly. 
give you a bit of an idea very very quick about what that's all about. It's like imagine you had a scale in a position like A. Uh, basically what you would be doing is off of every step, I, did, I played a major scale there, you would just build chords on every step. So the first chord is A major, the second chord is B minor, the third chord is C sharp minor, then D major, E major, and then you have an F sharp minor, and then you'd have a G sharp diminished, you do it down, or yeah, G sharp, pardon me. And then you can do it down there too. So and you just determine what string set you want to build those chords off. Of. But just remember you have you know three primary bass strings, the sixth, fifth, and fourth, and you can build uh, chords off each one of them. And I just did triads there, but you know you could also do sevenths. You could do all the seventh chord harmony off every step too. You have a dominant seventh on the fifth step. It's a little bit different. You know minus seven, you know half diminished, or minus seven flat five off the seventh step, and then the root major seven again. So that's really you know what I recommend doing is uh, studying that stuff. It's a big project to study, but uh, well worth it. You really get to know your harmony quite well. But uh, certainly check out my videos that are on YouTube. There, I'm sure you'll get a lot of those. I'll do uh, one more quick question here. This one is from uh, another mic. This mic, though, is from uh, London uh, KY. I guess that's Kentucky. Okay. Uh, do 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 do. Want to be in a magazine? Uh, um, Oh, you know what, this is just a, a really big long email saying uh, thanks a million for uh, having a YouTube channel and doing what you're doing. Well, that's a nice email to get. Thanks very much. I'll send you a reply back there for sure. Uh, anyway, that's about all the time I have uh, for today. Thanks very much for joining me. I will uh, certainly do another video like this next week and keep you guys informed of what's uh, coming into the studio by way of questions and concerns. Take care. We'll see you next time. Goodbye for now.